Welcome to Sports of All Sorts. Hi, everybody. It was a different kind of day. Your beer is a little colder, your wife a little prettier, your mood a little brighter. It's simple. The Bengals finally won a football game. It was a one-of-a-kind show created by a one-of-a-kind person. And whenever you have someone that you consider to be a family member, or the sense, I mean, because sports of all sorts, especially with high school football, you know, professional football, you know, any, any sports, you know, sports of all sorts, it's just one of the things where you always tag his name with it. You know, Popo. It was a day for records, milestones, and a victory. Dave Lapp and Mike Martin will be here in a few minutes. You can join us by phone. One thing I always uh, respect about John Popovich, sports of all sorts, no matter what the situation, this guy was a pro's pro in the decade of the 90s. It was tough duty coming in and talking about a team that was struggling. I mean, really struggling, like this year's team for an entire decade. And uh, John Popovich approached it the same way. Every single uh, sports of all sorts show. For the very first time, the head basketball coach at Xavier University, Sean Miller. I directed the show for about 15 years. I would get to meet and sort of become friends with people that I knew and I was, you know, sort of in awe of or just I was a sports fan in Cincinnati. It was a relief and a surprise to many that the Bengals did today, including Dave Lappin, Mike Martin, who joined me. Um, have you guys ever seen a game when you didn't complete a pass? in the second half and won the game, Mike? Not even in Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Popo is so selfless. I mean, it was never about him. And I think doing the shows live, you just never knew what you were going to get. And the way he handled it, it was, it was so seamless when, when he was working, because I, I know there was crazy stuff going on. No live guests, no telephones, no emails, but a chance to feature many different subjects and people. We would have wrestlers come on or skateboarders or whoever was in town. That's what it was all about, having sports from any different uh, walk of life. Years ago we used to play tackle football without any pads or helmets because we like football and we just thought we were tough. But we quit doing that when we got older because we supposedly knew better. However, some guys never quit playing football without pads. They just kind of changed the game. Come on, These are the Cincinnati Wolfhounds, the state rugby champions five times in the last decade. They're amateurs who approach this sport with a passion. He would do out, go out and do stories in the community, and he always made everybody, it, it was always such a good light. He, put every, he did such a great job of promoting people and their efforts and the different things that the community was involved with. Papa was always there with a great story. Let's go back to the phones. Michael in Madeira. Hi, Michael. How are you tonight? Hi, Papo. I'm good. How are you? Okay. You get a guy who might be, you know, might be a little bit wasted, or you could tell that he was, you know, upset about how the game was going, and Papo would cut it, cut that phone call real quick. And click. It's like, oh, man. I'm like, I didn't get the chance to answer. Nope. On to the next one. And I'm like, he just kept his composure. So I feel good. I feel as though I can get up in the morning knowing we'll beat Cleveland over and over again for the next <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. That's asking a lot. It was a, a good... Uh, uh, vehicle for him to show his talents to the people of Cincinnati and, and it was enjoyable just to watch him do that. And on the Rose count, Pete needs 35 hits to get the better of Ty Cobb, a record that's attracting more attention every day. You're a Hall of Fame person and um, you know I think you would have been a great success in whatever you at attempted to achieve. I think you would have achieved it and, uh, and I think the city of Cincinnati is, is blessed to have had you. I think you're a treasure to the city of Cincinnati. You're a community treasure, Papa. It was an honor to work with you and learn from you, and I just wish you the best in your retirement, man. All love. Dave and Mike will be back next week. We hope the Bengals will be as well. For Jake Jolivet, Chris Warner, Sean Dunster, and Sean Jones, thanks for being here. We'll see you next week. Right, in his last week here after 40 years, who better to have on the show than the one who started it 39 years ago this weekend, none other than John Popovich. John, what's your reaction to seeing all oh, I, I, you know, I'm overwhelmed by so many things that have happened, but listening to Lap and Jim Breach and uh, Rodney Heath and uh, uh, Matt Lucan and that stuff, you know, these are guys I respect the heck out of. And uh, I've had a chance to work with really good people. I've, you know, this is the ultimate team business. You don't get anywhere without the person next to you, without the cameras, without everything else. And those guys helped me along a great deal. Okay, now I have you on this show for the first time. Yeah. What's it like being on this side of the table instead of this side interviewing people? You're being interviewed this time. 
Uh, I'm not used to it. It, <laughs> it. it really feels odd to be interviewed, and that's happened a few times here lately. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not used to that at all because I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, you know, you, you know, most people talk in, you know, you, you, should I talk in 20 second sound bites? Yeah. Should I give it, make it shorter? Should I elaborate? Um, you know, I, I, yeah, it's just, it feels very odd to do that, Reggie. Well, I appreciate you taking some time with me. Stick around. We got plenty more with Popo after the break, so don't go away. <laughs>